So this is right across from my hotel. It's a little outdoor bar. Lots of flowers. I have no idea what they serve, just drinks or food. This is a library, I think. And it's in this beautiful park. And there's some dim sum down the street. Let's go get some dim sum. Hey guys, good morning from Stockholm where I just got up. I mean, I got up several hours ago and had breakfast with my team, uh, but then I went back to bed. <laughs> I was tired. Anyway, it's about one o'clock on Sunday and I'm gonna go get some lunch and then walk around a little bit, show you a little bit of Stockholm. Who knows, we'll figure something out. These have bloomed all over Stockholm. I don't know what they are. They smell, they smell amazing. Uh, but there's big, big bushes of these all over. It's really pretty. Like I said, though, don't know what it is. Maybe one of the horticulturalists who follow me can identify it. <laughs> Let's go find this dim sum place. This tree's in bloom too. Kind of a similar flower. Same park. There's the purple one over there. All right, where are we going? Up this street? Yeah, I think so. So, um, some of you remarked how quiet things were and there were no people around. I was out early yesterday, so I missed most of the people. But in general, yeah, it is kind of quiet. Let's, uh, let's just go for a walk today. Let's take you through the park and then we'll go down the street and we'll go find some lunch. My, uh, <laughs> My plan for dim sum has failed because the dim sum restaurant was packed. Packed. So, say la vie. Guess we'll have to find something else to eat. It is a pretty park. It's kind of warm today. I've got two jackets on and I don't, I definitely don't need two jackets. So we'll unzip one of them. Oh, there's the uh, library I mentioned over there. And here is a statue of, don't know, L-I-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Huh. I'll look it up later. <laughs> Lots of flowers out. Okay, let's make our way down the street. I think the U.S. Embassy is around here somewhere. I think it's near this park. I wonder how many Decades ago, they built this park to have the trees this tall lining the sidewalks. Definitely some foresight in planning. <laughs> Playgrounds. Same sense. Well, that's the Thai embassy up there, Thailand. There's a lot of embassies around this park. And that, is that Latvia over there? The flag looks like Latvia. Could be Poland. Uh, let's go down here. The best sidewalk is down the middle of the road. Yep. So we're going to take this a few blocks, then we'll cut down, try to find some food. Could always get a burger, but I don't really feel like a burger today. <laughs> oh, there's a fountain down there. You want to see some of the houses? Maybe I should get a pizza. Now, while all the signs you see are, of course, in Swedish, about 80% of Swedes do speak English. Um, people are asking me how I'm surviving. I just say hello, <laughs> and they immediately switch into English. Uh, 
the English proficiency here is very good. Very, very good. Um, you will have no problems. Well, probably not if you come into a place like Stockholm. Now, the farther north you go, it drops off, but you should be all right. <laughs> There's a dog in the window. That dog, see him? He's just watching people. Now, it's kind of more of a neighborhood area over here. Well, there are a lot of restaurants, but if I go downtown to the main walking area, then there'll be ten times as many people out shopping and dining and whatnot. And I'll probably be there later. It is definitely warm wearing a hoodie and a jacket. These folks are just wearing one thing and they're fine. Of course, they're Swedes. And This is a circle. It's like a traffic circle. Quite, quite pretty. Let's go into the circle. Check out this fountain. And over there, it looks like there's a market. Should we go that way? Maybe. There's a subway station there. I can jump in the subway. But uh, it looks like there's still a walkway this direction. Well, I just sort of realized I haven't had lunch. Maybe we should get some food. Eh. Whatever. So I think this is an island up ahead. I have to take a bridge onto the island. Yeah, did... Your garden, did you garden island or something? Something like that. It was on that painting. Okay, let's go out onto this island, yeah? Wow, look at that place. Oh, paddle boats and canoes and kayaks. That's a pretty big museum. There's a park over there. It's kind of cool. Oh, this is what we need, the Vasa, Vasa Museum, Museum of Rex. I'm going to the Vasa Museum. Oh, this other museum, Nordska Museum. It's pretty impressive. The Royal National City Park. Oh, wow, the tulips are still out here. This is like it was in the U.S. a month ago. Another tram coming. Grand Chicken. Is that Burger King? No, it's Max, which is this uh, fast food restaurant that's kind of like an American Burger King, but with like everybody orders on a computer. There's a gallery. A big Gustav Fudling Mandelschot. There's a circus, biological museum, the Nordsk Museum, the Vasa Museum. That's where we're headed. That's right down here. Being live. Ah, I think we have found the ship museum. Now, inside here is a 17th century warship that sank pretty much on its maiden voyage. And they dredged it up hundreds of years later and restored it. So it's pretty much the only fully intact 17th century sailing vessel in the world. And oh, there's that museum again. It's pretty, isn't it? Entree. It's good. Huh. 
Hi. Hey. Just one. Absolutely. 190, please. There we go. Yep. Please sign this for me. Thank you. And here's the ticket. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. To the museum. See, you just say hello and you know you're an American. Or English speaker. Okay, guys, you ready? Behind this door. Oh. Holy cow. I think it's huge. Because it's dark, I think they have to protect the ship. I think I should pull out my other camera. So let me pull that out for a second. the whole ship and back we go did you see the intricate woodwork up there there was like people yeah there's like people in there on the side some have fallen off but it's been under sea for so long oh wow there's an intricate design in that as well. People and animals carved in. I don't think we can go in. These are the gun ports. They used to stick out the cannon. gun deck. I think there was about 30 cannons. There was, this was a 60 cannons total. 30 cannons on the lower gun deck and 30 cannons on the upper gun deck. There were lions on the sides painted. It's really dark inside. Let me see if I can show you what's inside. It's pretty dark down here, so I had to switch cameras. August 10th, 1628 is when the ship went down. They took, oh, weird, they found the skulls of the sailors and they've recreated what they looked like based on the, the skulls, the ethnic patterns and whatnot. Philippe, he was found in the helm. Philippe was 30 years old, short, and slight build. He was found in the helm and was certainly the steersman. His teeth did not be properly, giving his jaw an odd shape. He's wearing a low-collar jacket with glass buttons, typical of those who were on the ship. Oh, that's a woman. She was... This is one of... Oh, they don't have her face, I'm sorry. There were two women on board. They were both showed signs of malnourishment. She was about 25, and it's she's in a different part. Oh, here's this skeletal remains. Here's the skeletal remains of some of the crew of the Vasa. More carvings on the side. These are some of what the, the carvings would look like when they were properly painted. Yeah. 
Let's, uh, I think there's an upper level. Let's go to the upper level. Zoom out a bit on this one. So this ship had a draft of 4.8 meters, which was 16 feet. So all but the lower 16 feet of this was uh, above water. I think we need to go upstairs. We've got to find the staircase. Oh, we can go downstairs. You guys want to, let's go down first. Yes, that's we're here. What was that old video game, Wooden Ships and Iron Men? <laughs> I'm dating myself by my video game knowledge. It's an old sailing ship. So it's held up by these big metal things. So I broke down and took off my coat because I was just dying. <laughs> it's pretty warm. This is the Vasa's crew of 445 men. 445 guys. One admiral, one captain, two lieutenants, one master, 20 gunners, 90 seamen who handled the sails, quartermaster stewards, marines, 150 marines, carpenters, boys, four boys. Wow. Battle. Different type of cannonball. Oh, one chain. A grape shot, I think that was called. No, maybe not. Chain shot. That's a scissor shot. A spike shot and a round shot. All right, we're up high now and looking down on the main deck. They've also got some recreations. This is what the front looked like. The bow had this giant lion on the front with the crown seal. Here's some more of the carvings that were on the sides. So this one, for example, was up at that part of the ship at the top right. And then this is one of the men that we saw that would have been right there on the ship. <laughs> this guy looks like he's in the brig. Oh, this is supposed to be a Polish nobleman. And this is like a caricature of a Polish nobleman trapped in a bench or something like that. The Swedes and the Poles back in those days had a few battles. And here we see the seal. Shop. <laughs> <The> diver. <laughs> the 
NASA divers. Yeah. Toy cannon, that's kind of cool. Dishes, pencils, postcards. So one thing I didn't figure out until I just came out here is I went through three doors to get in there. And while I was in there, I was like, I had to take my coat off. I had to take my second coat off. And I was like, why? What? Then I realized, oh, the humidity levels in there. It's kept at a high level of humidity to protect the wood in the ship as it's you know been underwater for 300 years. So basically in there, it's kind of like, well, it's kind of like going into the jungle room of a garden or something. It's, uh, it's pretty darn humid and warm. Now I'm back outside and it's cooler and it's getting clearing. It's kind of beautiful. Just beautiful. Let's go down to the water's edge, yeah? There's a bunch of ships around here. I'm going to take a look at those. It's actually bright. For the first time this trip, it's actually bright out. Helicopter coming. There's a lighthouse ship and some other historic ships down here. We have a hop-on, hop-off boat. Where do we go? Always going into the barn. This is a trolley car barn. That was an old trolley. Oh, that's a tram. It's going to the train station downtown. It's not that far a walk though. I think we can just walk it. Another one? Oh, it's an old one. The camera was doing stupid stuff. Paris of the North, fashion industry in Sweden, I guess. Very pretty. Let's uh, let's walk back into the downtown area over there. A lot more restaurants over there. We can find some lunch, find some more people. Oh, well, it's pretty crowded out here. Oh, I know I'm not. I'm going to end up in that park. I'm actually very close to my hamburger place. <laughs> priorities, priorities. We'll just do that. It looks pretty good in there. Okay, I officially know where I am now. <laughs> I had a pretty good idea, but now I know where I am. Because I know there's a burger joint up to the right. I can go get a burger. This is kind of like their 7-Eleven. There's lots of yummy stuff. Lots of sweets. In Sweden, they, they instituted a policy or just sort of a cultural thing. Sweets on Sunday or sweets on Saturday to try to cut back on the sugar consumption. They kind of made it like the weekend was the day when you would have candy and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know if they'd still do that. But... Uh, that was sort of their policy, sweets on Saturday, sweets on Sunday, or something like that. And uh, it did, it actually worked. People have, like limited themselves to the pick and mix. This, uh, I don't know what this is. I think this is a new electric car, the Polestar 2. Which is like, I don't know, is it like a Swedish electric car or something like that? I've never heard of it. It looks pretty cool though. So, further joint.
Look there it is. You guys ask me, are there a lot of Swedish girls around, like blonde, blue-eyed girls? And they're, yeah, they're pretty much everywhere. <laughs> pretty much everywhere. How much? I don't notice. There we go, flipping burgers. We'll go back here. Why don't I notice? Because I'm married. And because they're everywhere. <laughs> One or the other or both. Come on. Be a good guy. Hello, wait here. Okay, burger is finished. And we're gonna wander over here for a bit. Look at these things hanging across the street. Looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's just ribbons. It's not like it's lit up or anything. Maybe it is lit up at night. I actually have to get back to the hotel. I've got some work to do. And I've got a dinner. Now that I just had lunch, I've got a dinner in about three hours. <laughs> okay. My hotel is right back this way. Okie dokie, we're back at the park with the thing I think is a library. <laughs> and we're going to make our way back to our hotel. So guys, it's going to take a while to upload this video. Yeah, the uh, Wi-Fi in my hotel is really slow. I mean, a 10 minute video yesterday took an hour and a half. This could take all night, but we'll get it up line. We'll show you more of Sweden this week. Thanks for watching my hike. I'm going to go back to work now. Bye-bye.